Rim Rims, today I won't lie to you. I'm a little bit under the weather. And yes, it could be that virus that will not be named, but it could be the lack of sleep, the lack of human decency, the lack of self-respect. It could be the fact that I have no idea what day of the week it is, or what day of the month it is, or I'm actually not sure I know what month it is anymore. I'm not even sure what we did yesterday. I think we spent all episode getting bees. Does anybody really want to see bees? I mean, I like bees. Is that good enough reason? We spend the whole channel just doing things I like doing. None of you would be here right now. Maybe the bees aren't a good enough reason. This can't be what we, the human race, and I guess those three uh, apparent lizard people who keep emailing my business email address asking for remote mod support. I'm not going to help you, okay? I'm not going to help you, please. Is this what we, the human race, and those three aforementioned people evolved to do? Sit here and... Rimworld. I could be out there, you know. Could be out there on the savannah, getting ready to spear a gazelle. But the closest thing I'm ever going to get to doing that is spearing the sex bots from the YouTube comment section. Oh, it was probably a poor choice of words in hindsight. Yeah, it probably wasn't the best way to describe that. But there is one thing that makes this all worthwhile. One thing that just makes it so much better. Seeing a giant 12 foot salamander coiled up in bed waiting for Christmas. What do I normally do for these intros? I'm not entirely sure I even remember anymore. Who am I? Welcome to Rimworld, the Christmas series featuring your good friend Sue. And more importantly, welcome back to the Advent calendar, which I'm sure at some point will wake up whenever OBS deems me worthy of such things. There we are. <laughs> Thank you, OBS. Better late than never. You really do get what you pay for when it comes to these things. So today's Joris, and I thought going forward it would make for a much nicer daily advent treat if I were to present to you a daily Joris to look forward to, rather than giving it away at the end of the previous episode, thus ruining the chance of anybody watching the rest of the video. To begin with, we have on day 21 the silhouette of the one, the only, the Cataphract Joris. That is right, one of the finer Joris creations I've churned out over the past few days. And... Behind him, the most upvoted mod from yesterday's episode, it was none other than Expanded Materials Christmas, which apparently adds cookies. So our dreams of cookies and elf milk may in fact come true still. And as for day 22, I thought I would give you a taste, a, a, a trickle of the next Joris to come. Wow, that was arguably worse. We have a secret Joris. A Joris not of my own design, in fact, but one submitted to me by a very talented artist. You can tell by the fact that it is far more detailed than something I could have possibly churned out <laughs> in 10 minutes. So stay tuned for the full Joris reveal tomorrow. And of course, as always, don't forget to vote on your favorite mod down in the comments section. I will admit this year's advent calendar has been surprisingly down to earth compared to last year's, which was a complete state by this stage of things. And more importantly, we've researched military cleavers. Or at least maybe we've researched military I feel like the mod maker needs to research military clovers first. Now when I usually record Rimworld, my asthma of myopicness tends to fall across me and it's, uh, it's a drunken stupor more than anything else. I simply press the record button and before I know it, six hours have gone by in a blur and there's an episode ready to edit. But today in my impaired and frightened state, I'm alert. I'm ready. The adrenaline is coursing through my veins as if I am hunting that gazelle back on the savannah. So today we're going to try and take control of this series. All it took was potentially one of the most deadly diseases in modern history to slow me down. Look at this, we're not even on speed four. And I can think clearly for a change. So you know what we're going to do? First things first, we're going to make sure these people are well equipped. Because as hilarious as it is to see a angel man ride into battle with a giant pink skull mask. It isn't the best offensively. I would absolutely love at some point to get this generations mechanic underway. We have that returning from the Ohm series in in identical settings as we had in the Ohm series. The only problem is this time around, we've had our main character fall in love with a headless robot, which turned out to be incompatible, and one of our elf slaves fall in love with a Roomba. So we're not really doing too well on the whole breeding project. Now, somebody left a comment yesterday saying that the helmets I crafted for our people gives a significant negative to ranged combat. I believe it's this chain closed flat top. Uh, shooting accuracy minus 800%. The, oh, you're very correct there, commenter. I really can't argue with that one. I get the strange feeling we should probably swap those helmets out because the second they fire a musket ball, that shit's going to curve back like a boomerang and kill us dead. On the plus side, though, it's very heavily defensive when we've got characters who are incapable of combat. So we simply move over the 
massively inaccurate headgear over to the characters who can't fight, like the Roomba and Cash Cow the Angel. And because the slaves are currently an essential part of our fighting force, I'll also queue up a couple of chain coins. It's a slightly weaker version of what we're going to make for our actual colonists, of course. And then I think I even want to go as far to make our slaves some armor as well. I've decided, why not give the elves elven armor? Crazy idea, I know. They are slaves, sure, but I do kind of love the idea of giving our elven slaves quite a sort of gilded armor at this stage. That's the Christmas dichotomy we all know and love. What the hell is even that? Make a honey glass scythe? This bee-made weapon has better applications in horticulture than warfare. Uh, with 14.71 melee damage per second. Strongly disagree. And it's stuffable as well. If we give that to Bob... If we give two to Bob, the Dwarven Blade Master, he'll become death. Oh, uh, the Destroyer of Worlds, which a lot of people think is Oppenheimer. It's not Oppenheimer. It's in the Mahabharata. Okay. Well, I don't know why you're going to trust me on that. I don't even know what fucking day of the week it is right now. I shouldn't take... You shouldn't take... His, uh, you shouldn't, shouldn't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. And more importantly, you could build it out of absolutely anything, such as bronze. Or bronze. Or maybe if you're feeling brave. Even bronze. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get me started on copper. Well, you can really build it out of anything, huh? Uh, any of the four different types of iron. What What is the strongest resource we've got? What is it? 80 per... 90 per site. All the way at the bottom here, we have titanium. That gives a sharp damage of 102. Or we have titanium that gives a sharp damage of 180%. Madam, I will take your finest titanium honey glass site. <laughs> whatever whatever that means. I'd be willing to bet that we can't craft it because we're not bees. Oh. Oh, maybe we have been bees this entire time. My god, we were bees. My god, it's 3,000 work. <laughs> By the time that's finished, maybe I'll have evolved into a bee. Because that's, um, going to take a long time. And on the subject of things that have taken a long time. Did anybody ask for a limestone arcade forge? Well, I did. About five episodes ago. Aurang, what are you doing? You don't have somewhere else to go and be brain damaged. One of my top priorities, my side project, is definitely curing El Rang as soon as possible. I wonder if we could do it with magic. And I wonder if whatever has just happened to the game, I could also fix with magic. That's a very strange looking speed for. Oh, it's the Discord moderators. Yep, there we are. It was the Discord moderators with their, um... Whatever that is. A Macca... A Mac... Macarena... Mac a Macarena. <laughs> Legitimately my best attempt at that. The Macarena is an animal of intense nature. He is known to be the bad boy. Kill worth 11. I'm not entirely sure I know what that means. Uh, they say kill worth 11, but what it'll actually be is kill month 4, and then you get out in 2 on good behavior. <laughs> I also think it probably wouldn't be ill-advised to tidy up this stockpile at this stage. I'm offended on behalf of everyone else's eyes. Look, we have weapons cabinets. We have clothing racks. Not that that's... That's really the main problem, I will admit. Tall shelves need steel. Okay, well, never mind. There, there goes that idea. Moving on. Oh, limestone forge. How I missed you. Oh, look at it all. Oh, it's incredible. Look, sometimes I think I've played from a magic far too much on this channel. But a counterpoint to that is... It's really good, though. It's like pretty damn good. Look at it all. Okay, where do we even begin? Ah, uh, Sue. Little precious Sue. You need a helmet to really get in touch with your your magical nature. Remember, we can't make the wizard's hat. We gave a wizard hat to Fat Larry, and he got very upset that he was wearing a wizard's hat, and he wasn't a wizard. So remind me, why haven't we been able to make this armor for Sue before? When you magicite. Well, that's a good thing, because this Arcane Forge lets you blast chunks with magic, to make the magic chunks. You turn one chunk into 16 magic chunks. That's a that's a great deal. Wait, you liar. 500 magicite? Well, what the hell are you talking about? 100, you have 38. It's not in the stockpile, you idiots. Oh, damn it. I bet we've been able to make Sue a helmet for ages. Yeah, no storage space. Brilliant. Ninja gear. Sasuke. Finally, I can do the Fortnite dance. Ooh, tabletop games. Including everybody's favorite board games, including Discreet Dictator. Mon Monopsony and Sorcery the Assembly. Wowie, such advanced technology is going into that one. No other colony on the rim can make cards curl quite as much as ours. Right, so yeah, like I was saying, the annoying thing is we've probably been able to craft through this, this decent armor for quite some time. It's just, <laughs> it's just they didn't haul the stuff anywhere. Now that could be very ironically big-brained, 
Could we cure Elrang's brain scar by having a particularly high level healer? I know the druid has the ability to regrow limbs, but I'm not sure about curing permanent scars. We could take a gamble on it. We can make the torn scripts, give cash cow whatever random class he ends up getting, and just hoping we get a priest, but that doesn't seem like a very good idea. If we wait a little bit longer, we'll get advanced scribing that lets us make our full-on book, and we'll be able to know what the book's contents is before we use it. And if I'm focusing on making sure everybody's got good equipment today, we might as well go ahead and blast out all the good mage spells. Blink, so I can teleport across the place super fast like our robot maid. Heal, so that everybody can heal each other if they've got any mana left. Oh god, the storyteller changed. That's Igor. You're in a lot of trouble. I'm talking to the game there, by the way, not myself. That would be exceptionally neurotic. Arcane Bolt, in the event that they are disarmed, I thought that would be very, very helpful. EMP, in the event that we are up against enemies that are powered by electronics. Uh, crazy, crazy thing to suggest that. And then finally, Extinguish, because only cowards build fire foam poppers. <laughs> Our mages are the fire foam poppers. All right, what, what is it? It's Eager Invader. <laughs> Well, thank God I dedicated today to building everybody lots of armor and weapons and getting a good night's sleep. <laughs> Is that a shitload of Neutromian in our stockpile? Oh, it's Mercury. I call it HG because that's the noise you make when you drink it. <laughs> I can't be this sharp normally. What's going on? That's exceptionally highbrow humor. Put it on the YouTube Rewind. What are they going to do? Dislike it? Quest failed. Dan's mythical tomb. You know what I'd love to see? You know, I'd love to see one day. Quest failed, Dan Smith got tuned. Turned out Dan was lying. Turns out he was bullshitting the entire time. There was no mythical tomb. You just turn up and there's nothing there. That would be a hell of a plot twist. Like the Arco Nexus quest. You go through all the rigmarole of getting the three separate map pieces, an entire three campaigns worth of base building. You get there, it's just a cellular network tower. What, what if the Empire aren't psychic? Huh? What if this is all just a simulation? We're imagining things. What if there never was a Rome world? What if it was Earth all along? Well, I am doing stuff in the background here. Okay, it's, it's, it's things that you don't want to see. I, stuff like going through the outfit manager and trying to find a very particular cloak to give to... It's not it's not gripping stuff. I see that or we sit and watch Dr. Christmas spend the next four years making a scythe out of titanium. Ah, finally some Christmas charity. Beggars need alms. You'll be careful how you pronounce that. Otherwise, that could lead to a horrible misunderstanding. They want 400 and... Nope. <laughs> they want 340 silver. They want the silver so they can buy back a friend who was kidnapped. And I'd argue in a lot of ways, Sue's doing a pretty damn good job of becoming Santa. The people who need it. Well, a bit more like Robin Hood, now that I think about it. A very indirect Robin Hood in that the rich elves turn up to our base, we enslave them, we force them to money, and then we give that back to poor beggars who turn up at our door. <laughs> What the fuck is going on in this colony? Sue is apparently taking commissions on DIY lessons. And Bob the Dwarf, more than happy to pay for them. Oh no, a decisively average raid. Or oh, it's Xenomorphs. That's not decisively average at all. There's not many of them. Like going after that chocobo. Oh, I don't remember this happening in the films. Remember when an elf pulled out their flintlock pistol and blasted the alien? <laughs> I think even when we get the opportunity to build actual real guns, I'm keeping the flintlocks. They're just so much more stylish. And as we found out, very, very effective against demons. Which in hindsight, when your colony is led by a demon, is probably a poor thing to arm your slaves with. But that's a, a different conversation. It's been 30 minutes. Scythe is about two thirds done. <laughs> Colonists are gathering to celebrate Sue and Cash Cow's marriage. Well, that's going to put another five years on the Scythe production. Oh, look at this. I'm glad everybody dressed up for the occasion, with the exception of Sue, who's gone quite literally butt naked. Not what's going on anymore. Am I dreaming all of this? What a day! Colonists are celebrating the occasion by walking away. <laughs> oh, Gargrin has inspired taming. Is there another elephant now there we could grab quickly? I mean, not that we really need one. There is. Uh, we get a rhino. We could get a fucking void, Joris. I don't know if that will work, but I'll sure as hell give it a go. It needs to work because it. Oh, we need 10 animal skill. What's your animal skill? So, point two, three. You think we could get that before the inspiration wears off? She'd have to do it only training animals so we didn't lose the inspiration. Oh! Holy crap, that was great timing. I've really got to ask, what happened to the anti-grain warheads we had down there? Either some poor tribal raider stole them, or they've ended up back in the stockpile somewhere. Um. Wait, that's a good point. Why have you taken off your armor of the Valiant? I knew you had clothes somewhere. Holy shit, look at Bob. 
He is ready for war. Oh god, here they come. Well, I mean, Sue is absolutely annihilating them. The ditches aren't really working because they're just walking around the other way. We would have to extend the ditch all the way to the other side of the island, which, I mean, we can do. I'm all right with that. It's down to Bob to hold the line. Where the fuck did they just... Hello? They're magical. You're magical? What have you got going for you? You're a shadow. I don't even know what that is. You think we can get them to bleed out? They're bleeding out in four hours. Hold fire, hold fire. What if we get ourselves a magic elf? All we have to do is kind of keep someone there ready to patch them up immediately. She's down. Okay, patch her up. Tend her without medicine. Is she any good? Uh, Arume Gaywatch. That's a voice clip that's out there now. 11 crafting. And by crafting, I mean cooking. And by crafting, I mean 10. Can I start that one again? 11 cooking double passion. 10 crafting double passion. Good melee as well. Oh, no. Her name is now Two Pay Pig. What a day. What a, what a day. What a day to be alive. Well, if we can't get a Void Joris, I'll absolutely take myself a gay watch. Oh, is it time for another raid already? Igor, you spoil me. Scythe dreams are slowly slipping away. How close are we? 55 left? Honestly, let's just get... Who's our best crafter right now? Because I think they've, they've kind of swapped skills a little bit here. Uh, TX69 is still ahead. But not by much anymore. Let's just get you to go and quickly bash that out. I doubt we need everybody to deal with whatever this is coming in here. Tribal raiders? I, I think. Male wolf, man. And to the sound of flintlock fire in the background, we have finally done it. Look at it. Put it on the floor, TX69. It's excellent quality. It's nimble. What is that? Melee dodge chance plus two. Fantastic. And it's also lightweight as well. Very nice. And the overall damage for this particular weapon, bear in mind it was what, 37, 18, 24? I don't remember. 67! That's not right at all. Oh, but the excellent quality, there's the stat screen only shows normal quality. Good lord. Bob? My friend, this is yours. This is yours. Enjoy it. Embrace it. Get rid of those axes. Oh, they've broken the line, you say? How terrible. Maybe we should all start panicking. Or maybe ka -chow. Bob's here. Holy shit, Bob. Bob Robertson, the absolute slayer. Teleporting behind people, chopping them in half with a giant scythe. That's incredible. I feel like you need some serious upgrades, my friends. What are we going to do with you? I mean, we have to upgrade body training, right? It's two skills per rank, so we're not going to affect his teleport strike or anything like that quite yet. But this is... So, so good. And we're not really struggling with raids right now, I think it's fair to say. So, Body Mastery 2 of 2. 20% movement is already incredible, so you can get there a little bit faster. 20% manipulation, 10% breathing. Oh, and if we were to combine that with TX69's enchantment power. Enchant a melee weapon equipped by a target pawn. Enchanted weapons gain elemental properties. Fire, ice, or dark, or lightning. Wowee. Lending a chance may stun the enemy. I feel like that's a bit pointless. I guess we would just go for the additional fire damage. Double down. Kill them all in a single strike. Oh, shit. Bronze leads to steel. And that would solve a lot of our crafting issues. And speaking of steel, can you now call in... There you go. A little bit of, a little bit of free steel from the Empire. Where are you? Well, let's get you a little bit closer first. And at long last, we have steel. What a victory. Well, I hope we have steel. We might have steel anyway. Apparently, to unlock the steel ingot, we need stainless steel alloying, steel alloying, steel creation, colon. <laughs> and the research that came before that, too, was actually also really important. We got this wooden cellar, which I think, if I remember correctly, lets us make ice. And maybe at long last, steel. We'll double check that in a second. Oh, there's also steel creation. Uh, you know what? Let's go for that one, too. I think that's safe. Is this the one that makes ice? It absolutely does. Not only does it make ice, it makes ice too. I didn't even realize they've released water too. Oh, good lord. <laughs> I always knew this day would come eventually. Oh, poor sweet Elrang. The comment section are going to bully that brain damaged man. Now you know how I feel. Oh, they just ignored him entirely. Well, now you know how I feel the other half of the time. Well, they really did just run straight past. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Alrang, I'd be a little offended if I were you at this point, friend. I think I'm going to take a gamble on rerolling Sue's magic. It's not really that impressive. I mean, Frost Ray is good. Snowball is good. Lightning Cloud is good. I mean, they're all very good. 
But on something weird, not necessarily just powerful in combat. Summon minion, Ice Bolt, Lysol. Oh, Dominate could be good. And then the other one was Light Lance. Now, again, none of which is really, really that impressive. Wait, she can overcharge her mana with that. So if we keep doing it, will it give her... Oh, there is, there is a soft cap to it. I see. Advanced Heal sounds good, though. Okay, I like that. Along with a Frost Ray, Teleport seems pretty good. And then Refraction. Create a Wall of Light that affects projectiles as they pass through. Enemy projectiles will be offset from their intended targets. Friendly projectiles may use a portion of the light energy to create a mirrored reflection of the projectile. That is really, really cool. Okay, well, let's test that out. Uh, they come in from that direction. Let's throw it like there. Uh, okay, I don't know if that's worked, to be honest with you. We'll toggle on Advanced Heal and Frost Ray again, so her offensive power is basically back to the way it was before. And now it's down to Bob just to hold the line. Bob's already fucked it. Bob, you, you, you had one job here, pal. Let's move the robot maid down so that with her heal ability, she can help Bob out a little bit. Holy crap. And that's it immediately over. Don't worry. The comment section will be back and in great numbers. What happened to Void Joris? You good? Fleeing? <laughs> one of the rarest and most powerful Joruses of all. Runs away from an arrow. Brilliant. So in theory, we should be able to make steel now, right? Uh... Iron ingots. Refine an ironing into a steel ingot. There we go. Okay, well, let's do that until we've got... I mean, shit, I need like a thousand steel at all times, to be honest. And what about this one? Oh, smell iron and copper to steel. I'm not sure about that one, Chief, but again, same story. Until we've got a thousand, it's fine by me. Oh, shit. Is that the one that lets us make the arcane? It is. The arcane books. It's a great day to be you, my friend, Angel Cash Cow. And then maybe with the priest power, we can restore Elrang's brain damage. And that's an upgrade for pretty much every single person in the colony. I'm sorry, but this helmet is going to be absolute garbage, Sue. Sue is, Sue is not known for her crafting skill. She's the only one with the intellectual skill to do it. Uh, it's... It's good quality. I, I suppose that's acceptable. You look ridiculous. I'm sorry. Someone needed to tell you this. You look like a mad person. You, you look absolutely insane. And I don't mean insane in the paradoxically good way. I mean, she actually looks like a mad person who would scream at you on the bus. Although, you know what? Immediately forgiven. Immediately forgiven. She's built us a centrifuge. That lets us extract from Honeycomb. And then with that, we can finally build the breeding labs. Or brood chambers. It really labs if you're just crossbreeding bees. Ooh, but it needs power. 100 watts of power. Every single one of you laughed at me when I celebrated these vanometric power cells. Who's laughing now? Me. King of the bees. Well, king of a few bees. Oh, they're pretty bad bees right now. Hello? I mean, obviously, yes, we are going to research black powder. Uh, hello? A crate with a man trap named Nelly. <laughs> What a sentence. Okay, now we just need someone to sit here and extract the honeycomb from... What was that? Like, 81 honeycombs? This is maybe the best day of my life. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad this happened so close to the end. Now, if only I could find the security tab and actually look at the bloody thing. Um... It's certainly here somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> ah, security tab. Hello there. This is where somebody's made it... Cost steel? Okay, it's iron. Oh, shit, I just found all of that into steel. Now, I know Dr. Christmas is incapable of violent. Does reloading and aiming a trebuchet count as violent? Because, I mean, he's not doing the killing, is he? That's momentum and gravity. Nelly, I'm not going to lie, pal. You're really giving me some mixed messages here. Nelly is hunting Gargarin for food immediately after joining us. <sighs> Nelly, don't make me do it. Oh, no. No, Nelly seems okay now. Instead of eating Gaga and one of our elf slaves, they're instead going to go and eat a thousand raw honey. Mining. What do you mean? Mining, mining who? Mining how? Mine shaft. Can use for mining resources and chunks. Okay. Why don't I remember this? Seems a bit of a redundant question to ask that at this point. Is that essentially just an infinite mine shaft quarry? Because as incredible as this quarry has been for kickstarting everything, giving everybody armor... It is going to run out soon, 33%. And bear in mind, we haven't got any big swaths of mountains to mine out this time. Oh, yeah, that's a mine shaft, all right. Uh, 69 ingots, that thing that I just don't have anymore. Oh, no! Elrang and Pang Power? Well, Elrang's not going to get bloody far, is he? So he didn't pack any toast. He'll just collapse of his own weight. 
Uh, Pang Pal, though, is a little bit more of a concern. What I was really hoping to get with Sue is some sort of pacifying magic, something to quickly send her to sleep and style. Uh, failing that... Failing that, what the hell do we do? Dr. Speedy could give a heat stroke. <laughs> Everyone is too well armed at this point. What an incredible problem to have. Uh, Sue, get in there with your 16 points here, melee. Bop her over the head with your, with your demon fist. Oh no, more elves as well. Okay, okay, Igor, now is really not the time for this. Oh, oh no, wait, Sue has the Omni tool. Shit. Ah, uh, okay. Reroll. Oh, she's got heal and... Oh, God. What do we do? Ah, uh, TS-69. Get over here. I need to bot this slave with your fist. So it's going to run around frantically and soak up the... Soak up the shots. She can self-heal. Come on. Send her. Come on, send her. Please, TX-69. Come on. Calculate this faster, damn it. Maybe Sue can just stand there and heal up TX-69. Keep her in the fight a little longer. There you go, there you go, big brain play. This is working fine. Come on, H how is this taking so long? This is painful to watch. You're a friggin' robot in chainmail. Holy crap, you've done it. You've done it, you brilliant fool. Okay, you capture Pang Power. Sue, very carefully go and collect our rang. What are we gonna do here? Dr. Christmas. Bring the Christmas beatings. God, this is cruel. This is a special brand of Christmas cruelty. Oh, he's immediately downed. Oh, I'm so sorry. Elrang has no idea what's going on. Pang Pao put him up to it. He didn't want to. He didn't want to escape. He's just happy living his life, eating his bread and petting the big snake. Okay. What a terrible day to be Speedy Salamander. Um. Yeah, I mean that could be. That could be life-ending for the guy. A lot of our people haven't recovered from the Slave Rebellion either. TX-69 is pretty damn injured. Pang Power is pretty injured. Elrang's down. Could be down to the fact that he hasn't had his bread yet today. We've got to get up there as soon as possible. Operation Save Speedy Salamander. They've shot him in the eye. Immediately shot him in the eye. Now, because he's an animal, he'll also start to flee in terror. Oh, he's down. He's already down? You son of a bitch. Okay, okay, okay. You know what? Let's get everybody to defensive positions then. Sue and, bizarrely enough, the robot maid. <laughs> Let's go and heal Dr. Speedy. <laughs> Sue can give robot maid a bit of cover and apparently pick, pick apart these people with just pinpoint accuracy. Holy crap. Absolutely dismantling them. Look at this. Okay, let's get you a little bit closer. You can't heal because we need... Uh, but actually, why can't you? You've been muted? Magic and mute. How long does that last? Oh my god, Speedy's back up. Speedy, how are you looking? He's not doing well. Okay, well, I guess the pain has worn off slightly. Whenever Sue is up muted, we can patch him up, but I think we're gonna have to rely on the robot maid. Robot maid, your magic range is atrocious. This is not good at all. Don't worry, Doc Speedy. We've got you. We've got you. The room has got you. Okay, how are you looking? I didn't actually lose an eye, though. All right, here they go. We should be fine now. I do want to dig the ditches all the way over to either side of the island, though. That would be insane for defense. Die. Come on. Kill him. Are they not retreating? What, the, what are you talking about? Oh, that was all of them. Wait, what the hell is this, then? Hello? Uh, uh that's that boom rat. Oh, it is that boom rat. The boom rat is a person. Fozzy win. I thought they weren't retreating. Turns out that... Boom rat used to be a person. Well, Dr. Speedy, you've been avenged, but you do still need patching up pretty damn fast. And you know what? I really can't complain. Getting Igor Invader is always a trial by fire. It's, a, it's an incredible way to see exactly where we stack up to our current difficulty, especially with the combat readiness check being set slightly more strict than its default settings. We're doing, we're doing pretty damn well. In fact, I'd say we're doing better than that. None of those raids really even touched us. I might even go as far to say that now with all of the magic and the gear and the weapons and the armor, we could even do with cranking it back up a little bit. Those first few raids we were getting at the very start of the series, we were getting clapped left, right, and center, but now we're, we are the clappers. I'm even more surprised given that combat readiness check counts your people, your, your, your current amount of colonists, that is your weapons, your armor, Bear in mind right now, we've got three characters with weapons and armor that aren't doing any combat. All of which are contributing to the difficulty, but aren't putting anything back in. And we're still doing fine. I think the real MVP, the ditch. 
Shout out to my man, the bitch. And the crazy part is even now, I think we've barely touched the medieval era because this is just such a massive mod pack compared to Ohm. Not to mention you guys are adding more and more on a daily basis. Holy fuck, there is just so much. And this is with that gigantic research boost I gave everything to. I guess we'll leave it there for today. Seems a perfect time. Everybody's pretty damn upgraded. Uh, everybody's painted, more importantly. We look like a, a whole new take on our Power Ranger squad from, <laughs> from the superhero series. And tomorrow, it'll be a whole new adventure with whole new friends. And my personal goal right now is to get us a bee girl to run our beehives. One giant bee to bring the rest of the bees under wraps. I guess a queen bee. That is a pretty appropriate metaphor. Don't forget, as always, to vote on a new mod down below. Assuming I survive till tomorrow. Thank you in the meantime to Chris, the Longhoff, Steak and Bacon Akins, Deidre's, Altari, El Chalupa Cobra, Alice to the Rescue, Blank, Vermin, Commander Crint, Rim Me Gently, Passy965, Irish Badger, Zevin Wolf, Seal Food, and Bling Magica for their support. The executive producer tears over on Patreon. Thank you all for your support. I still haven't replied to the message on Patreon because I'm currently locked out of my Patreon. So please stand by. Uh, and I will <laughs> get onto that as soon as is feasible. Again, assuming I'm not dead. Uh, thank you as well to Pockies, Yellow Engram, Vegan Slayer, This Flex, Slinger, Uwu, I Eat Shoes, Gaffy, Foxy Cogs, Saxon Cat, Evan Dragon 323, Avolka, Delicate and Hunt, James, Icy the Great, Fred, and Ben Taylor as well. Goodbye. Please, let me go. Forget about me. You just don't need me in your life anymore. We'll just both be better people. We just need to move on. We just need to go somewhere else. Experience new things. It doesn't all have to be bad because it ended. Be happy because it began. I don't know. I don't. Well, I, I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs>